Hey everybody, we're starting off with factoring quadratics. A uh, quick little review here from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Uh, let's just remember as we talk about quadratics, we're talking about a polynomial, a multi-term function um, that has the uh, exponent of a squared. So it's going to have the degree of 2, and that's going to make something that's a quadratic. Since we're going to focus on here in this video, we'll move on to factoring cubics. And later throughout the year, we'll work on factoring higher degree polynomials, although there's not nice tricks like we have for factoring quadratic. But before we get there, let's just do a quick little review of how we multiply two binomials to get into a trinomial like we have here, three terms, and to get into quadratic. So let's just pretend we have x plus a times x plus b. Now just do not connect this a and this b are not the same. Notice we got capital A's and small and little a's. So just remember to multiply this, we uh, just distribute and we use our FOIL property. So we get x squared plus ax plus bx plus ab. All right, and if we simplify this down a little bit, we can see that this is x squared. Uh, noticing that both of these terms here, if I group those together with associative property, I can pull an x out, and we have a plus b times x plus ab. So really what we're working here is we're going back, and what we're trying to find is in order to find these two numbers that we have here, what we notice is that it's the sum of these two numbers in front of the x and the product that gives us that. So as we're breaking this down, we can see, okay, to find this tail number, or if we have this tail number, two numbers need to give me the product to get that. So I need to have the product to get that. And to find the, the middle term, I need to have the sum of those two values. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first example here. x squared minus 5x minus 6. Okay, so again, going back through like we just talked about, these two are going to be my sum, and this is going to be my product. All right? So, let's go ahead and take a look. What are all the factors of negative 6? Alright, so if we think about those, it, my factors of 6 would be, um, well, I could have negative 1 and 6. I could have negative 2 and 3. I could have negative 3 and 2. And I could have negative 6 and 1. Notice that I have to have 1 negative, 1 positive. Now, one little trick that I have here is notice how this term is a negative. Therefore, my largest number of these two would have to be a negative because that's going to be the sum. So if I kind of keep going with this and I look at the sum now of these values, let's see what we have here. This would be a 5, 1, negative 1, negative 5. Well, which one was I trying to find? And this is what we've got here. Boom, negative 6 and 1. So now we can write this nice and neat. x minus 6, x plus 1. And there is my solution. Now let's just multiply this back out to just check. All right, using our FOIL, we got x squared plus x minus 6x minus 6. And let's see, x squared, we got negative 5x minus 6. And we are good to go. So there is our solution. All right, let's move to the next one. All right, factoring our next one. Again, we can see what we got here. We want this to be our sum and the product. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the factors of positive 12. So, and as we start to get better at this, you know, we realize we got 12 and 1, 6 and 2, 4 and 3. Oh, and there we go. Uh, 4 plus 3 is going to add up to give 7. And so we are good to go. So we got x plus 4 times x plus 3. And again, if we work this all back out, x squared plus 3x plus 4x, plus 12, and combine our like terms, we're good to go. All right, let's move on to the next one where we have, where our leading coefficient is no longer just 1. Okay, so let's just see how this works out when we're multiplying uh, using our FOIL. So when we see with these first two terms, we got 3x squared. And now notice, when I have the 3x times negative 5, I'm actually going to get that multiple. So it's actually negative 15x plus 2x minus 10. So notice how that interaction between the 3 and the negative 5 worked out. So we got 3x squared minus 13x minus 10. So if we take a, take a look back at this, we can still see some cool things. The negative 10 comes from the last two parts of this. Okay, so the last two parts of those binomials. 
but the negative 13 is now getting the multiplier by whatever is opposite of the 3x. So we got to take that into account as we're moving on to the next one. And then the rest of this worked out just like we saw before. So let's move to the next. Okay, so we saw that the 3x squared, and, and this time we've only got 2x squared. So what are the only things that can multiply to give 2? And we got uh, uh, 2x squared would be x and 2x. So we can see how this is going to start off. We've got 2x. And we've got x, nice and easy. So now over here, in this space, I need these two values need to multiply to give negative 10. Okay, so let's think about how that's going to work out. But now the one trick is that whatever is in this space is going to be multiplied by 2. So it's going to be double of that value, where the other one will just be multiplied by a single value. So whatever is in this one will just be multiplied by 1. So, whatever we put here is going to get doubled up in this space. This space will just be regular old 1 times that. So, let's see how this plays out. So, let's look at our factors. So, we got negative 10 and 1. Uh, and again, I got a negative there, so I'll think about that. Negative 5 and 2. Uh, negative 2 and 5. And um, negative 1 and 10. Okay, so let's think about this, how this is going to work out. Again, whatever I'm putting in this blue space is going to get multiplied by 2. So let's just try one out. Let's try 1, for instance. So we'll go with 1 there first. So let's try 1, and then negative 10 would have to go here. So it would be plus 1, minus 10. So let's see what happens when we do this. Um, all right, so when I multiply, so I get my 2x squared. Here I'm going to get my minus 10x. I'm going to get plus 2x and minus 10. So let's check this out. 2x squared. Um, let's see. Minus 8x. Minus 10. Did that one work out? Not quite. All right, so let's get rid of that. Um, let's start back over here. All right, so that one's gone. So let's try again here. Uh, so now let's try negative 5 and 2. And so let's see. So let's start to think about how this is going to work out. If I put the negative 5 in this spot, it's going to get multiplied by 2, so that would be negative 10. The 2 would go here, so that would be negative 10 plus 2, which would just leave us with negative 8. So that's not going to work out. All right, what about if I put the negative 2 over here? All right, so it would be multiplied by 2, so it would be negative 4. Negative 4 and be plus 5, which would be a positive 1. So we're getting closer now, but uh, not quite there yet. But what if I flip around some of these positives and some of these negatives? So let's see this one. Let's try putting the minus 5 here and the plus 2 there. So the 2 here is going to get multiplied by 2, so that would be 4 plus negative 5 would leave us with the negative 1. And there we go. So let's go ahead and work this all out. So we got 2x squared. We've got plus 4x, minus 5x, and minus 10. And we see 2x squared, minus x, minus 10, and we are good to go. So we're doing guess and check method here right now. Okay, this one we've got a couple more things going on. We don't have a 2 or 3 for the leading coefficient. We've got an 8. So we got to take the factors of 8 first and think of how that could be. So we could have either 8 and 1 or 4 and 2, all right? And then we got to work with a 15. So we could go 15 and 1. We could go 5 and 3. Um, and notice I've got a negative in it right here. So I've got to make sure that both of these values are also negative. Negative, 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 negative. Um, and uh, that's our only factors. All right, so let's see what we could do here. We could start off with an 8x and an x. Okay, and again, whatever is going to be going in this space right here, is going to get multiplied by 8. All right? And whatever is going in this space right here will just get multiplied by the singular x. So let's just think about our values that we have here. If I tried a negative 15 here, that would get multiplied by 8, and that would going to leave us with negative 120. There's no way I'm getting to negative 126 there. So that one's out. Um, so that's not going to work. So let's try the next one. Uh, let's try maybe a negative 3 here. Think about how that's going to work. So then I'd get negative 24. All right, that's kind of close. And then I'd have to go with a negative 5 here. So I'd get 
negative 24x and negative 5x. Uh, that's negative 29, so I'm not quite there yet. Maybe I could flip them around. Let's see what would happen if I did that. So that would leave us now with um, negative 40 uh, and negative 3. So negative 40 and negative 3, that's going to be negative 43. So that's not going to work. So maybe 8x and, and x isn't going to work out. So let's try, try new here. Um, so let's instead go with maybe 4 and 2. So 4x and 2x. All right, and now again, let's still try our values that we have here. But let's get a little smart about this and think, well, I'm thinking 4 times the 5 is going to get me to negative 20, and 3 times 2 is going to get me to negative 6, and there we go. There's my solution. So let's work it out. So we get 8x squared minus 20x minus 6x plus 15, and we're good to go. We see that that works out. All right, so this is a bit of a pain in the butt, but you got to know how it works. So let's show you maybe a little shortcut that works here. Um, something that you can do is, is what we call factoring by grouping. So what we do in this case is we're going to take the first and the last and multiply them. So 8 times 15, and that's going to go ahead and leave us with 120. All right, so now what I'm doing here is I'm finding all of the factors of 120 that add to give negative 26. All right, so it's a bit of a different start here with this. Uh, but let's go ahead and list all of our factors of negative, of, uh, sorry, 120. So I could have, and now both have to be negative because I need a negative there. So I need negative 1, negative 120. All right, that's negative 121. Negative 2 and negative 60. Nope. Negative uh, 3 and negative 40. Nope. Negative 4 and negative 30. Negative 34, I'm getting closer. Uh, negative 5 and negative 24, negative 29, even closer still, negative 6, and negative 20. All right, so there it is. So here's how this works now. So I go 8x squared minus 6x minus 20x plus 15. Okay? Now I'm going to do a little grouping. So I'm going to group these first two. I'm going to change this to a plus and put that minus on the inside and group these last two. I'm going to pull out my GCF, my greatest common factor. And so if I look at these two, I see that it's a 2x. And that leaves me with 4x minus 3. This one I'm going to pull out. I, if it's a negative up front, I'm always going to pull out. So negative 5 times 4x minus 3. And what do you notice is the same here? These two things. So I pull out the 4x minus 3, and I'm left with 2x minus 5. And there we go. There's our nice way to factor. Well, let's do another one of those. So again, starting off by grouping, so we're going to take the first times the last, and we're going to do 12 times negative 7, which is going to leave us with negative 84. Okay, so now what we've got to do is we've got to find all the factors of negative 84 that add to give negative 17. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with this. Um, let's see, we got negative 84 and 1. We've got 42 and 2. We've got uh, 21 and, let's see, what do we got? 21 and 4. Whoa, 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 there it is. Right, negative 21 and 4 add up to give negative 17. All right, so there we go. So now let's write this out. So 12x squared minus 21x plus 4x minus 7. So now let's look at our grouping. Again, this is just using associative property here. Only if there's a negative in this spot do I put it inside. Okay, so only if there's a negative there do I put that inside. So let's pull out what's in common. And we see in this one we've got a 3x. And so that leaves me with 4x minus 7. There's nothing to pull out here, so I'll just say a 1 just so I have it. 4x minus 7. And now look, these two are the same, so I'm going to pull that out. And what's left over? 3x plus 1. And there is nice factoring by grouping without doing all that work of guess and check. Last one of factoring by grouping. Um, notice this one, whoa, it isn't a quadratic, but wait a, get, wait a second. There is a greatest common factor through all of these and the negatives. So notice they all have an x. They're all evens, so, and, there are, and there's negatives. So I'm going to pull out a negative 2x, and let's see what's left over. I got 6x squared uh, plus 23x minus tw plus 20. 
And there we go. All right, so now let's go ahead and factor this inner term. Always look for that GCF first. So we've got all the factors of 120 that add up to give 23. Uh, and let's go ahead and start working through these. We actually did that on the other page, so you can go ahead and check that out. Um, and let's see what they're going to be. And that's going to go ahead and leave us, if we just kind of make our life easy here, it's going to leave us with an 8 and 15, so we could work off of that. And again, they're both positive because we have the positive there. All right, so let's see. we got negative 2x. Again, we're just going to work on the inside. 6x squared plus 8x plus 15x plus 20. And now I'm going to use some grouping here. So I'm going to group the first two, group the last two, and pull, start pulling out GCFs. Again, just ignore this negative 2x. Let's take out what's common here. So we've got a 2x, and it leaves me a 3x plus 4. Plus, I'm going to take a 5. 3x plus 4, and there we go. And the trick is really, if you're having trouble figuring out what to take out, it's always, you know, well, if it's working, it's going to be the same thing there and there. So we got negative 2x, and now we see, let's take the 3x plus 4 out, and the 2x plus 5, and we are good to go.